Hi everybody, it's Joshi, doing something a little bit different with this seminar recording. When we recorded the seminar, we spent the whole time coding and debugging and learning about code, and we ran out of time before we got to our working results, so we finished that up afterwards, and now I'm recording an addendum that shows what we actually accomplished, but I'm going to edit this in at the beginning, so watch what we're building here, stay tuned afterwards, and you'll see the process of building and debugging it. So we're building this manual seal recipe, and basically manual seal and its companion instant seal are consensus engines that allow blockchain nodes to, in the case of manual seal, author a block anytime you submit an RPC call. And in the case of instant seal, the node will author a block as soon as a transaction goes into the queue. So here's where we're working. It's in the recipes and it's pull request number 202. And we have some code. Uh, it's not 100% done, but it's done enough to work for sure, and I've actually already built it. So let's just start here. I'm going to run this manual seal node, and we'll run it in dev mode. OK, looks good. And if this were Babe or Aura or proof of work, we would be authoring blocks right now. This thing would every couple seconds or every time it mines a block author a new one but with manual seal it's not going to author anything until I actually submit the RPC request so let's explore that RPC request so I wrote the RPC commands down in the recipe here I'll just copy paste them you can see here we're calling engine create block and create block does what it says creates a block we've got a couple parameters true means it's okay to author empty blocks False means don't finalize it right now. And null means build it on the best chain you know of. You can optionally specify a block to build on here, but when you don't specify, it just builds on the best chain, which in this case is the longest chain. So let's just try this thing. I'll paste the command in here. And it says, this is the success message. It tells us what block it created. And if we look back at our chain, we can see like, okay, here it is. It prepared the block, and then it imported the block, and now we have a block. So that's great. And I can run that command a couple more times. And I get a couple more blocks. Now we're up to block number four. So very good. Now if I change that parameter, remember this first parameter, it means whether it's acceptable to create empty blocks. If I change that to false, then I get an error. Transaction pool is empty and it's not going to create empty blocks like that. So let's see how we can actually put some transactions in there. I'll use the apps user interface. So we're connected to our blockchain. You can see we're on block four. And a lot of times, I, in my demos, I sit here and wait for another block to be produced. But again, that's not going to happen unless I issue the command. Now we're on block five. That's great. So we do have a couple custom types that we need to put in here. Let me just do that real quick. OK. And now we can make any transactions we want, but a balance transfer is a simple one. So we'll send some tokens over to Ferdy. Everything looks normal. And again, we would normally sit here and wait for a block to get authored, but it's not going to get authored until we issue that RPC command so now we can actually go ahead and say we you know disallow empty blocks and we'll still get a block because we do have a, a transaction so you can see it did create that block and we got all these notifications that our transfer went through and Ferdy got his funds so another thing we can do when we're creating blocks is to set this second option to true so before I submit this command, let's just go back and look at our node log. And you can see that so far we've got no finalized blocks. And that makes sense uh, because in the past we've always had this second parameter as false that says don't finalize the block, don't finalize the block. Well, if we put that parameter to true, now we can see we did author a new block as expected and we finalized that block. And then that means that we've also recursively finalized all of its ancestors. Okay, well, speaking of finalization, there's another command I want to show you. Uh, but before I can really show you, I need to just create a couple more blocks. So we'll just create some empty ones. There's one, there's one, there's one. 
So now we're up to 10 blocks, but the last finalized one is seven. And so the next command that I want to show you is called finalize block. So here's the command to finalize a block. And I'll just go ahead and start by copying it. And uh, so, okay, engine finalize block, that all makes sense. And what we need to do is actually tell it what block it is that we're going to finalize. So this is one that I copied from the write-up, which means this block's probably not in my chain, or almost certainly not. And so when I run it, you know, we get an error, of course, unknown block, header not found, no problem. So let's go back and actually get a block that we do have. Uh, here, let's just do block number nine. So, oops. So I'll copy its hash. And I'll replace the one that I had there. And when you're entering these block hashes, they go in with zero X at the beginning and they go in quotes. Um, okay, cool. And so now you can see that didn't cause us to author a new block. That makes sense, but it says successfully finalized a block. And so now we're at finalized number nine. And I could do that again with block 10. Boom. And now block 10 is finalized. So the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is instant seal. And instant seal is a different engine that's similar but not the same. And the way it works is instead of issuing these RPC commands, the node will just automatically author a new block the second it gets a transaction. So let me kill this thing. And I don't even have to purge my chain here actually, but I'm going to run it in instant seal mode. So you can see we started off at block number 10 again, and just like before, it's going to sit here not authoring, not doing anything, until it gets a transaction. So let's give it one. We'll do another transfer. And that was pretty fast. That's because we're on instant seal. That wasn't on a timer. It just authored that block. I paused there just to read this log message. I didn't remember all that stuff was in there, but uh, okay, cool. So if we we can do that for any kind of transaction, really, like uh, there's not much in here, but we can always system remark. So let's just say one, two, three, four. Boom, and instantly in. And so there's block 12. And so you notice instant seal is not finalizing the blocks so if we ever feel like we need to finalize those blocks then we can just go back and do that same as before but we can't do it now because we're not running that RPC yeah so it's saying that methods not found that's because when I run it in instant seal mode it doesn't have that RPC so if I kill it and run it back in manual seal mode now I can issue that same RPC command and so now we can see that we finalized block 12. That is what we're building today. And uh, I hope you enjoy the recording and I hope you learn a lot by hacking on the service and in the consensus. See you at seminar. The thing that I always try to remind myself and everybody is it's always 1400 UTC. So if your time zone changes, then that means the seminar is gonna shift by an hour. Uh, Shun, this is your first seminar. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit and uh, say what we're going to be working on today? Uh, okay. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Shun Lanlege. Just Shun is fine. Um, we're going to be working on Manual Seal, which is this toy consensus engine um, finalizes manually and seals blocks manually as well. Any questions? All right, cool. Cool. So I guess we'll just jump right in. What so we're trying to, I I I'll have, I have a question actually, or uh, okay, more of a shoot, shoot, for the shoot. Field. yeah, cool. So um, so the manual seal engine itself is something that you wrote, I think, right? Yeah, it was, and it's in Substrate. It's part of the main Substrate repository, but yeah. it's not used in any of like it's not used in Polkadot. It's not used in the Node template or any yeah, it's of not. like popular high-profile nodes. And so we're going to solve that today. Yeah, basically. Um, so manual seal is useful for testing runtime code, basically, um, seeing how it behaves. Mm. Well, and I, so I guess... what's the manual part? Like when I want to manually, first of all, what, what does it mean to seal? Like what can I do? Oh, this looks like a good part. Yeah, maybe start there. 
Um, so basically, authoring a block. Uh, seal means to author a block. Yeah, cool. Okay. And then when I want to do it manually, I do it. You, you, you send it over RPC. You just send a, an RPC request saying, hey, seal a block, and it will seal a block. So it's actually there's actually two consensus engines. There's manual seal. There's instant seal. Um, instant seal sort of builds on manual seal in the sense that it works by sealing a new block every time there's a new transaction in the pool. So every transaction like uh, has a block created for it. And that's it happens instantly. So back to jumping right in, we will be adding a sub command so that we can say, hey, we want to run instant seal or we want to run manual seal. By default, it will be manual seal or maybe instant seal by default. Yeah, instant seal by default, then you add a command for manual seal. Um, so this is just struct opt. I might have to like. Uh, use documentation, but I'll try as, uh, as best I can to like use my brain. So enum sub command. Um, I have the base. So I'll just add a tiny bit more more context here. So you're in the recipes right now, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm in the recipes right now. So I'm currently working on a branch that we will push once this seminar is over. Yeah, cool. And so basically the idea is like, I, I mean, you guys know that I like the recipes and work on them a lot. And I love this idea of manual seal. I like, well, I like both. I like instant seal because it's cool for like testing your run times. You know, you don't have to wait six seconds for a block or like you don't have to wait for a block to get mined or whatever. If it's proof of work, your transactions just go in. And I also love the idea of manual seal for learning purposes so that people can see like, okay, I'm teaching my node or I'm telling my node to author a block like right now with, with this command or whatever. And so we're basically like writing a node, we're writing it here in the recipes. And it's like, uh, like Shun said, we're going to use the uh, manual seal and the instant seal. And so we started for those of you who were here two weeks ago when I demonstrated proof of work consensus. We started by basically just copying the proof of work node, ripping out the proof of work stuff that I showed, and now like we're adding in the, the manual seal stuff. Does that sound right, by the way? Did I? Because that was fast for me too. I, I, I got you, Chloe. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of confused a bit. Okay, yeah. Long. Uh, instant seal. I have no idea what these options do, by the way. If it doesn't work, we'll check the, the documentation. This is spelled wrongly. Right. All right. All right. So CLI main command will also edit this place. Sub command run of the config. Um, I guess this is all we need to do then. Really? No. So. Yeah, so one, I mean, so we, I think we have a little bit of a design decision to make. So should it be the case that we have like, um, like two different sub commands, like run manual seal and run instant seal, or is it more just like we have run and there's a default and then we have like a flag that's like, you know, dash dash manual or something. Okay, so I, I just, it just occurred to me that sub commands don't actually, you can't use them as a flag. Right. So, yeah. 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 If I want to flag, I, I need to put that in run CMD. So, uh, just going to quickly take all this back and then make this a struct. And yeah, maybe call this super run CMD. Run CMD. And then have a field flattened called run. CMD. Yeah, this is cool. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we can now have the flag uh, for manual seal. Let's make it go. So, yeah, by default, it will run instant seal unless you specify the manual seal flag. And we just have to swap this out for our commands. Okay, so back here, we have none. Da, 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 da. I would like if we could pass that flag somehow to this function, new fool. Yeah. 
Um, think, think, think. Okay, so I'll just do this. Manual seal. Call this a bool so that we can specify in the command.rs. Um, so this is config, which is the first argument. New full is supposed to be a function. It takes a config argument. Um, just pass that in here. And then we should have access to the run command. Yeah. Opt stop run dot. Hmm. What is run? Sorry. Super command. Okay. So yeah, we should have manual seal here. Or not. Oh, it's private. We can fix that. Also, it occurs to me that because we have like multiple run, we could just do run. Does that make sense? Give, yeah, we need. So let me uh, explain the context as far as I know it, and then you can talk us through it too here a little bit. So we've got like, so right now you're hacking in like the CLI part, and this is where basically yeah. we're parsing or and handling the options like the subcommands and flags that the user passes in. Yeah. And we're doing it with this Rust library called structopt, which is how Substrate does it and all the Substrate nodes do it. Yeah. Um, and then that's where, so, and I, like the goal is what we said. Oh, Nicole has a really good question too. Like what will manual seal command look like when being used? So yeah, maybe we should come up with like a, a bit of like a, an example of like, so I'm picturing this would be like, when I run it, it would be like dot slash target slash release slash, um, what did we call this one? Slash manual seal node. Then it would just be dash dash uh, manual seal. Okay, cool, cool. So it would be like, and if we don't do that, if we don't put dash dash manual seal, then it's just going to be an instant seal. Instant seal, right? yeah. Okay, that cool. Be false. Um, wrong type of parameters. Expected zero found one. Why? Um, why? Okay. So okay, so yeah, and so another thing that maybe we need to mention is that like we started. So we're in the recipes right now, right? And we started by copying that POW node, like we said, and that POW oh, code, ah, ancient code, basically. It was based on alpha three, so that came out like a month ago. And so, do you want to show the cargo Tamil file actually, June? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So everything is like based on my branch, long ass name. Yeah, so that's a branch in the main substrate repo, and um, it's pretty. It's really similar to Alpha Five, but it just has a couple changes that you made to Manual Seal pretty recently, right? And so that's why yeah. we're doing that. But it also means like we have to make these updates that happened between like Alpha Three and and today, basically. Basically. Yeah. All right. So I completely missed where I was. Command. No, so I was. So what we need to do now is basically set up the import queue. I already did that, to be honest. Sorry. But it's just a simple call to the manual seal crate, or uh, a call to the import queue function from the manual seal crate. It takes a box client. There's actually a box block import. I would love to jump to definition, but this macro won't let me. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I can, actually. You just have to take my word for it. Then we have to spawn the manual seal task. We do that by the future. We're just going to assign the future to a temporary variable. It's, a, it's actually a long running future, and it should not terminate for any reason unless you're terminating the node. So SC consensus manual seal run manual seal. And so this, this future that we created, is this the thing that's going to listen for us to send RPC commands to actually like author blocks and stuff? Actually, no. We okay. are going to add the RPC up here. OK. Actually, just do that with, hmm, this is interesting. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I actually know how RPC to do this. RPC extensions. Yeah, oh, yeah we'll do it down there. Yeah. We'll just do it down here. Yeah. So we'd say if manual seal i really like when like i get editor suggestions i don't have to type the whole thing but 
progress so with RPC extension extensions yeah here mm, SC consensus manual CEO. okay RPC manual CEO. new rights right so okay, I have everything I need the handler You know what? I don't really like this. So just use RPC. Um, should be okay. RPC. Uh, manual CEO API to delegate. Handler. This is basically how you set up. Um, an RPC extension, if I remember correctly. So we, we've seen this before, or like uh, something super similar to this on a seminar, like maybe two months ago or quite a while ago, where we made a, an RPC that basically just calls into a runtime API and queries for some like some on-chain state. And so I'll, I'll post the link to that recipe about how you do um, RPCs. And this portion that you're doing right here is is basically the same as that. Yeah, basically. Okay, so one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. We need some, we need a sender, we need a sender. We need a sender. If manual seal. And I'll explain what, the, what a sender is in a minute. Just let me like write out all this stuff. Run instance seal. Come on. Thank you. Cool. So it still takes a block, box block import, an environment, a client, a pool, select chain, inherited or providers. Wow, my also will take a stream. Okay, so it's not really a sender, it's more of a stream. All right. So what how manual seal works is you send requests to the RPC, and the RPC can communicate with the authorship task over a channel. And this is just us doing the plumbing and setting up that channel. So we might need futures somewhere here, if we don't already. Yeah, we don't already. Just, oh wait, we do. How did I yeah, miss that? It was, the, it was the goddamn first one. <laughs> so we just say, if I remember correctly, it's this futures um, sync. If I'm not wrong, maybe not sync. Interesting. Uh, sea lion is really taking its time. Channel, ah, uh, it was renamed. Um, so I, I, it's going to be a bounded channel, I believe. Channel or not. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's okay. Take your time. The, so the channel that you're creating here is like, is the thing that we're going to pass these messages from the RPC handler, which like the RPC handler is just waiting for the user to say, to issue that command that says like author block or finalize block or whatever. But it's yeah. also listening for a ton of other things like submitting transactions and querying state and getting metadata. Like it's listening for all these RPC things. And so right now you're wiring that RPC handler up to actually communicate with this like authorship thing so that when it gets a particular kind of task like that manual seal one then it issues the corresponding command to the actual manual seal engine to author a block basically okay, okay. Um, I'm going to make this a sum rx and else this will be none what's the problem Okay, unexpected, expected, found, nothing. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, should work, should work. Okay, so run manual seal. I need the box block import. I, I guess I could just say service client. 
Yeah, so this is, now we're talking about like the block import pipeline that I also talked about when we were doing proof of work node. And so basically like, this is that onion like thing where there's, right, am I right about that? Where there's like layers of block. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And this one, just like our proof of work one is sort of a simple one where there's only the core, the core is always consensus, and then one layer outside. And so before that layer was like the proof of work block import. And now it's going to be like the manual seal block import. But in general, it can be a more complex thing. Like in, in most of the popular substrate nodes, you have the client in the center, and then you have like the grandpa finality one outside of that. And then you have like either Babe or Aura or some authoring service outside of that. Okay, so what I'm now doing is basically feeding the authorship task with all the objects it needs. It needs a, a proposal factory. Which is sort of how it's this object that like creates blocks. It's uh, uh, you can actually take a look at this since we have the definitions for it. Proposal factory implements environment, and environment allows you to init, creating a proposal, so proposal, and with the proposal you can propose a new block, giving it some inherent data, some digests, the maximum time for this function to run, if uh, if while the function was running, the time elapsed, it will just return an error. And do we want to record block proof? I'm not actually sure what this does, to be honest. But we'll take it for what it says. It says it records proof. We'll believe it. Um, so proposal, just feed that in. What else do we need? We also need a client. So service client once again. We also need a pool, so service transaction pool. I'm not actually sure um, this transaction pool method returns the right transaction pool because there are two, three different transaction pool types. We'll figure it out. We'll find out rather later on. So this... Ooh, tell, sorry to derail you. Uh, can no, it's you fine. It's fine. Um, can you tell us more about the transaction pool types? I actually didn't know that. Okay, so there's a maintained transaction pool. There's a, the transaction pool trait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know we could tags transaction pool. Um, is that different than maintained or? Let's see. Let's see. Actually, let's just jump to definition since we have that here. Chain API. Okay. Uh, I see. Pool. Okay, transaction pool. So this is what appears to be the inner pool. Yeah. Is it? Graph. This is in graph. So there are like different layers. The transaction pool is also like an onion. There's like the innermost transaction pool, which I think is this, which I think is this. Then you have a validator pool, which wraps the inner transaction pool. Uh, you can just find that. Yeah, which so it wraps the inner transaction pool, the base pool. Base pool is well even further down the line. I'm now confused. <laughs> what does this okay, okay. This wraps that, the that validated one, pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This wraps the validated pool. Um, and like this is also being wrapped by something else. If we try to see like where this is being used. Okay. Wrong. Would be nice to know. Uh, validation. This or this. Aha, basic pool. So basic pool also wraps this, and so like different levels of transaction pool or like the different rings, if you could think of it like that, provide different functionality. So the basic pool supports the idea of maintenance. Um, if there's a new block, we can tell the transaction pool that that new block exists, and the transaction pool can like discard transactions that were previously included in that block, or also notify like watchers, um, people who were watching transactions for events, whether finalization or in block, or even retracted as well, meaning that like the block that um, the block that a transaction was included in has been retracted in the case of a fork. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
to closing up the transaction pool rabbit hole. Uh, yeah, right. So I wanted, yeah, that's a good way to say it. So we were, the reason we got on that rabbit hole is because basically like this manual seal thing, when, when I, as a user issue this command, this RPC call to like, hey, go ahead and offer me a new block. It has to then reach out to the transaction pool and say like, hey, pool, what transactions do you have for me? I'm about to write a block. And so yeah. I guess like the, the other authorship engines like Aura and Babe, they must also do that, right? They have a yeah, way. They do. Okay. Yeah, cool. And the last thing. Right, right. So if you just copy all this stuff, to be honest. And eliminate the stream because it's instant seal. So the anatomy of this, what's the problem here? Expected inherent data providers found option unknown. Um, oh, so did you actually create your? Oh, you did. Actually, we can just get rid of this and I create it. That might be what you want. I actually wrote that when I did the POW node. It wasn't like leftover. Yeah, I guess like ghosts okay. from the POW. Uh, we could just do this as well. Right. And we would have to create our own inherent data provider. I believe that comes from SB inherence. There's a scroll up to the top of this file real quick. I think ah, like yeah. 20, I think that's what you want. Yeah. That's one that I that I wrote when I was doing the, the proof of work one. And so like what what this bit is doing, what that helper function up top is doing is saying like okay our runtime is expecting some inherence some of these transactions that like aren't signed by a user they just go in by the block author and like concretely this time it's expecting yeah that exactly that timestamp one and so we're basically just teaching the authoring engine like hey when you go to write a block you need to make sure you include the timestamp inherent in there or else the runtime's not going to accept it Okay, so yeah, we we'll just do that. It's a, it's a unit struct, so we don't need to initialize anything. I, I guess that means because inherent data provider is just implemented for the unit struct. Cool. And I guess that com that brings an end to like construction stuff. And we can just come down here and say service spawn essential tasks. If manual seal, then yeah, it's manual seal. Otherwise, it's an instant seal task. And future, and close, and see. So everything is done. Okay, so I, I've got a I've got a question before we go on. So you did sort of like. In, when I wrote the proof of work node, I only had to do once what you just did twice. And you did it twice because like we have this manual seal variant and then we also have the instant seal variant. And so my question is when we did that like um, like with RPC extensions, does no, that no, no. need to have a flag that says like only do this RPC extension if we're doing, oh, you did do that on line 65. It says if, okay, cool. Because we don't actually want the RPC if we're doing instant seal, because instant seal just listens for transactions and goes automatically. Sweet, yeah, basically. Okay, cool. So just to look at this again, I feel like we have everything we need. Oh, Kian, do you have something to say? Yeah, uh, there was a button here somewhere to raise a hand, but I couldn't find it. Uh, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to check if my understanding of proposer and bay aura and manual seal is correct. OK. And, uh, so, in my understanding, uh, Babe, Aura, or now Manual and Instant Seal, they dictate when we build a block. Whereas SC authorship is the one and only module that we have that dic dictates how we build a block. And yeah, 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 yeah. I think it would be very interesting in the in the future to actually tweak with that as well. Because now, I think like SC authors, SC. SC authorship. Basic authorship. Yeah, just I think it just pulls the transactions from the highest priority, and I don't know. In the future, you might want to be biased. You might want to I don't know execute your own transactions first. You want to execute someone's transaction. I think there would be interesting stuff to hack on top of that as well. 
Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. cool idea. Like to to this would be how you would teach your node, like your node specifically, to author blocks in a sort of like a different or non-standard way or something. Basically, yeah, uh, yeah. I've uh, something. It's an idea I also thought about. Basically, including your own transactions, or even for testing, like uh, what's the word, invalid transactions, um, to see if they get included. They go through your verification process, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That would also be where, or tell me if this is right, like if I, if I wanted to write a malicious node that like was, was trying to censor people's transactions, like that's where I would write that code, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would uh, hack your nodes to like broadcast blocks with invalid transactions. Mm. Okay, cool. I guess this is the part where we build and realize that like we've been doing rubbish from the beginning. First check though. I forgot the name. It should be manual skill. Oof, this is definitely going to take a long time. Okay, while it's building, I have some questions. Since cool. I'm a bit late to the game. Yeah, we can go back to the code. Could you walk me through um, what all of the parameters are in run instant seal? What you're passing in? Okay, cool. Yeah, that's actually. Uh, Something I should have done while I constructed the params. No, no worries. Um, so instant seal takes the block imports. Basically, it takes everything the run manual seal function takes, except for the command stream. So if you notice, manual seal takes a command stream, and it's basically uh, a stream that yields commands telling manual seal what to do. We can just look at that. It's an enum. And the variance of that enum you know, is seal new block or finalize a block. So like that's what the authorship task understands. You tell the command to seal a new block or finalize a block with a hash. Uh, so the reason why instant seal doesn't take that command stream is because instant seal itself produces that stream based on I can just collapse this, based on the transaction pool. So the transaction pool has um, this concept of an import notification stream. So every time a new transaction is imported into the pool, it will fire a notification over a stream. And so what we do is we just map over that stream with a seal new block command saying, hey, um, just basically converting that stream into an uh, engine command stream. And we can just pass that on to manual seal and yeah. So what we can just go back and see what manual seal actually takes box block imports, which it uses to import blocks into the chain. It takes an environment, which, like I said, is for proposing new blocks. It takes clients. Clients is used for quite a few different things. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Just to see a new block. Okay, so we can see what client is used for. So client is used for checking the parent hash to build a new block on top of like the best uh, chain in the block. Okay, wait, that's select chain, sorry. But yeah, we get the header for the hash you supply. So it, seal new block takes this uh, parent hash. So you when, you when you set a block, when you set a command to the authorship task, you say, hey, I want to build a new block on top of this hash. And it's an option, so you can decide to send that or not. If you don't send it, we'll just get the best hash the best uh, header from the chain. But if you do send it, we actually have to fetch that header from the chain. Uh, if we find it, then yay, we're able to build your block. If we cannot, we just let you know that that hash does not exist on chain. Um, I think client is also being used somewhere else. OK, maybe not. So that's uh, what client is used for. Can you get out my face? Um, pool is for checking if there are transactions in the pool. Um, if I could just go that, get to engine command. So we have this param that says create empty, which means do you want to create empty blocks? That's blocks without transactions. If you say you don't want to create empty blocks, we will check if there are transactions in the pool. And if there aren't, we will just terminate the block creation process because you already said you don't want empty blocks. Um, so that's what pool is used for. The command stream, I explained that earlier, select chain is used for getting the best chain, like the, be the best header. And inherent data provider is used for the block creation process. 
we just passed that onto the proposer, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we create an inherent data with the inherent data provider and just pass that on to the proposer. So the proposer includes that inherent data into the block, which is also used for like uh, block verification. This is, I, I guess this is where you include like babe specific inherents into a block for babe, but we don't really, I don't think we really use um, any inherents for manual seal, except for timestamp, which I think a lot of other just check out the uh, runtime. POW here. Oh, this this is a cool thing too. We're we're using the same POW runtime, even though we're putting it into a different client. The same runtime should work, or that's the hypothesis at least. Yes, that is the hypothesis. Um, so yeah, timestamp is included in the runtime. So we do need to provide. Uh, an inherent data that provides that runtime, that timestamp inherent. If we check on this, see if that's okay. We're slowly chugging along. Does anyone else have questions? Um, maybe like specific to manual seal, like how manual seal accomplishes what it does, or I, I wanted to ask about the, the like create new block command because I remember that like there's some optional parameters, and in the simplest form, you just say like create a new block, and it does it on top of the best chain, but I can't remember, is there like, is there an option to say create a new block specifically with this one parent block, like not necessarily on the tip of the best chain? Yeah, yeah, that's why we have that hash here. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, cool. Also, we have finalize, which says, hey, do you, we want to finalize this block right now, like as we create it, we can just mark it as finalized. Um, and this sender is just specific to the internal implementation. So if um, if this engine command came from manual seal, which uses an RPC, this sender is what the authorship task uses to communicate back like errors or successes to the RPC. It's just like a channel, like you send a channel on the channel, and then like the authorship uses that channel to send back to the RPC. So the idea I have, is a, I have a dumb question. Why do we want to finalize a block as soon as we create it? That's uh, I don't know. It's entirely entirely up to you. It's an option that like you can do with the runtime. So I just said, okay, fine. You can provide that API. You could it could be any reason. You could uh, be testing. Um, you could have like you could testing runtime stuff that like requires finalization, and it's it's there for you. So you can just instantly finalize a block instead of having to like create a block and then finalize it. Should be somewhere close. All right, cool, cool. So, uh, did you finish the stuff in the CLI? The the part about like passing that flag? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, I think that's here. Yeah, that's here. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm so I'm gonna have to look. You know, I kind of got myself prepped at least as much as I could for the manual seal stuff. I haven't really, like, I, I have this issue open that I want to create a new recipe about extending the CLI. Okay. Um, but, uh, I yeah, so I'll have to look more closely at this, but it's it looks cool. Like, why do we have run.run? .run? What's up with that? Okay, so um, opt is CLI, the struct. And we have uh, a run command, which we flatten. That's run. And... <laughs> Run is also run CMD, which comes from SCCLI. I don't know if that makes sense. But well, yeah, so the one that comes from SCCLI, that is like the the standard or normal or default CLI that like the node template has and the substrate node, and it's pretty yeah. similar to what Polkadot has, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay. like this, these methods come from SCCLI, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then we wanted to add our own flag, mm -hmm. so that's why we had to. That's why we have this mess, basically. Like we could have also called it default or something in super run command. We could could have called it default, and then it would be run dot default. Or something. Run dot ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Is is that that's right? Is is that okay? I'm sorry. I'm. I don't, can you like say that again? Because I just so, imagined it and it like, escaped it, me. Right, so we have um, 
opt.run.run and the the first run is the is the first run in the first struct that we just saw and the yeah. second run is the run in the new struct that you defined right this is yeah it's come from secli this the second run is from secli the first run is from our old custom struct super run ah ah okay that way that around okay Yeah, I need to consider like hooking up to the build server. Honestly, don't know why I'm being <laughs> lazy. So once once we have this thing built, like probably well, we're gonna have to debug and everything. And like assuming it it builds the way we're expecting, then the idea is that we're gonna launch a node, and it's just basically gonna sit there and do nothing until we give it this RPC command to tell it to issue a block, and then it just it issues blocks whenever we tell it to. I guess right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so for like debugging purposes, I should also just probably do a print line here. Running manual seal. Yeah, that's a good idea. And running instant seal. Cool. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure, sure. Still have build? Yeah, we still have build remaining. So with uh, with manual sealed, we receive transactions. We keep them, I think, I guess, in the pool. And only when we receive an RPC, we uh, create the block. With instant seal, we create one one block per transaction, or yeah, one block per transaction. Okay. So immediately, like when we receive a trans, like the pool doesn't even wait. Like the pool receives immediately. Yes, yes. Uh, as soon as like the notification, the import notification is fired, we um, we begin the block production process. So the thing is, you could actually end up with like more than one um, transaction in the block as if you send them all at once. Yeah. Because the block production process takes time. So it, at, at the end of every at the end of the day, uh, the pro how do I put this? The notification there's a lag between when the notification fires and like when the block will be produced. And so yeah. every transaction in the pool will just get included in the block. So if you fired three transactions at once, it will just be included in the, in the, in the first block. OK, cool. Thanks. Uh, apply trusted extrinsic. I, I actually don't know what I'm doing here. Like, yeah, I, I hand can, over to you. Yeah, that's an easy one. So this is just like a, this is one of those things that went into substrate because they were trying to like do some migrations or fix one of the stalls or something. And it just happened to be in there at alpha three. So you can just delete it and it's right in that runtime file. So yeah. like temporarily added this additional runtime API. I'm not really sure what it was for though. Yeah, perfect. So that's actually useful for anyone who's like updating their node from alpha three to later. You just got to ditch that API. All right. This should be last one. Fingers crossed for this being the last one. <laughs> wow, really? We haven't even gotten to the service stuff yet. You're so optimistic. <laughs> Chain spec. Ten. So, yeah, so this is another one of them. Yeah. Can you do that? That doesn't, that doesn't sound right. You, you, can't, you can't do this. Uh, no, it needs to, yeah, the way to fix that is to call it, uh, put that parameter back and change it from chain spec to generalized to chain spec, I think. Mm -hmm. So generalized chain spec is what you Yeah, and I think here. it still needs that type parameter. Uh, I think generalized. I don't think that that exists, to be honest. Nope, it doesn't. Okay, you can just tell us. Or it. maybe it's generic. Maybe it's generic chain spec. I can't remember. Generic chain spec, okay. So Genesis config, I assume. Yeah, and then we also, uh, along the lines of the same change, we're in your new full and new light functions in service.rs, you, then you have to delete that type parameter in, uh, yeah. 
It's so it's already deleted. Oh great. Okay. And did you do it in New Light? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, great job. Okay. How did that happen? Or you just did it yourself? Okay. So. Oof. oof. Yeah. Optimism was unfounded. Expected short memory DB found empty tuple. This is a good. This is a good opportunity to actually check out what's happening in manual seal block import box block import. Right. Yes. Box block import. And we want a box block import. Uh -huh. How is it implemented for the client? Okay. Where is memory DB coming from, though? So you called SC consensus manual seal import queue, and it didn't like the thing you gave. Oh, box new client seems like it should work there. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. the macro invocation. Transaction. Oh, uh, uh, wait, hold on, hold on. I feel like I understand where the problem is. Ah, ah, transaction for, oh. Okay, so I need to update my upstream file. Uh, Boxwork imports takes a transaction type. I may have made that transaction type an empty tuple, and it didn't like that. Mm. Whereas it should, wait a minute. It's also tuple here. So what file uh, you're showing us right now? Uh, hold on, hold on. That's like a manual seal file. Transaction type here is transaction for B as the backend then block. Okay. So this is what I'm supposed to supply, basically. Open recent. Okay. Hopefully this uh, shouldn't take too long. Yeah, that, I mean, that's cool. And the, the point is, like, as long as we're learning, that's that's great. So you're back in substrate now, right? This is not like our thing we're doing in the recipes. And... Yeah, so I'm back in substrate, the manual seal crate. So yeah, I guess there was a recent API change that will warrant this. So transaction four. Just to make sure I have SB blockchain, or maybe not. Just close this. CYM allows me to like automatically import, so I'm just going to wait for it to suggest. Ah, nice. So, <laughs> coming from SC client API or SC. what does SC client API want? Oh, yeah, same thing. So, we need a back end type. Manual seal does not have. Minus two blocking port doesn't have a backend type. Phantom data to the rescue. Um, so phantom data is this really cool thing that Rust has, where you can have a struct be generic over or generic parameters, and you can just put that on phantom data, whereas you don't actually need a field that holds that generic parameter, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we need to hold the backend type. Manual seal blocking port has this now. From wait, no. Uh, you know what? Let's just get rid of this. I don't really know why it exists. Yeah, I don't really know why it exists. It should it exist? Okay. P I. Instead, I'll call you block. Yes, coming together slowly. Block, block, and I will call the backend. Stay backend. Huh, huh, hold on, hold on. I need to be sure what the second parameter is. Transaction for SB, SB, B as stay backend. Okay, what is state backend? State backend is 
Where is it being used? This is not helpful. Mm, what implements state backend? Ah, in memory. Oh, so that actually makes sense. It all comes together. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, expected in memory, found, tuple. OK, cool, cool. But what uses in memory, though? I'm not entirely sure. How do we how do we access in, uh, uh, state backend? Wait a second. We don't want to do, do the in memory one for our real blockchain, mm, though. No, we don't. We don't. What we want is uh, state backend. You know. You know. What? This should not be a big of a deal. I can just use state backend. Right. 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 Okay, put the will be maybe. Oh. Oh wait, yeah. Missing this. Also missing this. Uh, why? Does it need a capital B? I'm actually just waiting for like C Lion to figure out that this does not exist in scope, so we can import it from the appropriate place. Also, I need to do the same here. And hopefully nowhere else. Ah, here as well. Uh, I'll call you block. So import queue will have to, you know, you know, move that into a where clause and be here. Where block is this? The uh, would be state backend. So, okay, if we just like zoom out for one second. So you were making some changes to the actual like manual seal crate itself. Mm -hmm. And it was, what I what I understood was that like, for some reason it needed to know the, t the transaction type of the node that it was gonna be used in. And previously it had been hard coded to like unit or that empty tuple, which is not what we want. Yeah. And so now you're just trying to basically like satisfy the type system and have it look up the, the transaction type for our node. Yes, basically. I think backend should come from SC client API. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, yeah, backend is here. Backend should be here. Isn't there a trade backend in here? There it is. Yay. Okay. Okay. Uh, how am I going to work this out now? State backend hash for bulk. Yeah, I'll just use state backend directly then. Hash for bulk. Okay, finally, import. From SC client API. Also import from. Come on, come on, come on. We can make it. They're already imported. So for like brevity or you know on a quicker like ease of development, I'm just going to point. The recipes directly to my local repo. Okay, instead of the GitHub one. Yes. I'm trying to like find out if there are any other places. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's one. Like that's all. Substrate. Okay. Okay, so that, I feel like that should solve our problem. That was a very long detour, but it should solve our problem. And um, so that's like, whatever change we just made there was a fix that needs to go into like substrate upstream. So we'll update that, like that PR, I guess. Yeah, I, I will. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, 
Uh, how? But since it's no longer a get, it's just like a path that you could just get rid of this. Yeah, you need a better path than what you put there, though, too. I think. A consensus. Plant. Consensus. All right. We know, you know, we could also yeah, look at other problems. And cargo is making my whole machine slow. I think it's self. What am I doing? Um, builder. And do we actually need it? No, we don't. We don't need this. So we fixed this. Um, we've also fixed this. Okay, so aha, I knew it. I knew it. Mismatch types. Expected transaction graph pool found basic pool. Should be what line? Easy to solve, 92. Just this. Put that in here. Cool. Hmm. So service select chain. Okay, this is an option. Unwrap. Did we add a select chain? Yes, we did. So yeah, we can unwrap that. Ugh. 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 Where's that? Here. Yes, here. Um, STD sync. Is it sync? It's here. Ah, phantom data, not phantom. I feel like this has been initialized somewhere. Yeah, I feel like this has been initialized somewhere. I just don't know where. What exactly was the error message we were working on? Um, which one? Because like we've had a lot of. Well, errors. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to keep us in the. <laughs> Or what's going on right now? I know, like, the level of context I have is, like, we're just debugging. Oh, we're down to these two. Okay, great. Uh, so, phantom, yeah, so you fixed that by calling it phantom data. Okay, so it's here's the one. It's not contained by the infiltrate self-type or predicates. Okay. You might just need to add another phantom type for it or make it a tuple. Yeah, tuple, basically. Tuple this. So, B block. Right? Right? Is that right? Block. Um, manual seal block import. I'm just trying to like ensure everything. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do we actually use this at all? No, we don't. Well, that seems like a mistake. We probably need to use block import somewhere. No, no, we, we don't. We just use the client's block import directly. We don't need that. That was a waste of our time. Complete waste of our time. Yeah, yeah, that was a complete waste of our time. Let's uh, check that again. Okay, so the import queue is the only thing left to fix. So what's the problem? Help for the da, 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 B should be what? No. Oh, wait, wait. Box block import B should be block not. Yeah. Basic queue. So what also, 
Dumb qu oh, B is the state backend? Okay. Yeah, yeah, B is the state backend. And this is B. Wait, no. Transaction for... Wait, transaction... Transaction for... Yeah, should be this. I don't... I'm not a fan of this API. I feel like... Yeah. Well, yeah. Do we need it? Yeah. I feel like it uh, exposes a lot of internal stuff that we don't really care about. Okay. Okay. Further restricting block to. Are we using block where we're supposed to use back end and back end where we're supposed to use block? Block import B. Yeah, B is supposed to be the first is supposed to be block. This is supposed to be block. Transaction for Oh ah. Ah, it's supposed to be the other way around. Transaction for block. And as well as transaction for block. I really hope this is the last thing to fix. Maybe not. Trade bound B back end is not satisfied. Okay. Um you could also just plug back end in if you require it so much. But why do you require back end? What needs back end? Trade S C client API back end back end is not implemented for B. Oh I okay. And that's this is where now? This is on import queue. Let's see. Okay. Can you give a quick info on the difference uh, between state backend and whatever? Blockchain database backend does not perform any validation. State backend is used to read state data and have changes committed to it. What is the relationship between backend and state backend? Like, there's no relationship. Well, what what does either one of them do? So, state backend is like the thing, like some like is it RocksDB? It's like the thing that stores the blockchain state. Yes, I believe so. Okay, and what is backend? The thing that stores the blocks. Database, yeah, the blockchain database backend. Okay. If I that would include state backend somehow. But let's see. I'll consider further restricting parameter type B to. Yeah, something requires something requires SC client API backend. Oh hey, let's what was that error message one more time? Something requires SC client API backend. SC client API backend backend. And where did you import backend from? Um, from blockchain. It's, okay, so is that the issue? It was talking about a different place. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to understand what requires like backend. Though. I thought I thought transaction for requires like uh, state backend, not. State backend for oh 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 yeah state backend for is an alias. Okay, so we don't actually need this. And yeah, we don't actually need state backend for any reason. So. What's the problem? May not live long enough. Consider adding a static bound to what exactly? The transaction. I'm unfamiliar with that, to be honest. Backend as state backend, as block, as header, as hashing, trades, trans. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe this is. This should cover, I guess. Yeah, backend should be static. 
Is that what you want? Basic queue. Ah, I see. Transaction should be static. I mean, I would assume if backend is static, then automatically transaction is static. So here's the oh. Google question. Static lifetime means what? Uh, so in Rust, lifetimes are how you define the lifetime of a reference. A static, a static lifetime means that the reference will live for as long as the program lives. Okay, uh, so it means like the it's not going to get like de the memory won't get deallocated until the program ends. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, all right, all right, boom. If you want to create oh, a flag, we're to deeper or we're to like outer. Yeah, we're room. yeah we're yeah. back to like okay. Okay, so the trait bound client db backend. POW runtime API box bug import is not satisfied. It's not implemented for a reference to a client. Import queue. Let's go back to import queue for a bit, sorry. Just to like understand where the madness is coming from. Import queue takes a block import, box block import. Um, yeah, block import is not implemented. Really? Block import is not implemented. It should be, like it should be. It's not implemented for... This makes no sense to me. Uh, can you just like, let's just rubber ducky this one. Tell us what's what's going on here. So this is the first error. Yes, yeah, first error. Error. Okay, it's, this is line fifty in service.rs, and it's, it's it's when you tried to return. Yeah, it the says the queue. client does not implement box. That uh, doesn't implement uh, block import, and. Just like to quickly check what the block import requires, it requires a transaction, right? And like if we go to how the client which we're using implements it, it's like we do exactly the same thing. Okay, so so what file is this now? This is in substrate, right? Not in the recipes. Yeah, this is in substrate. <laughs> mm. Maybe if you keep scrolling down. Ah, two versions of SP consensus are being used. Okay, so I guess oh, this out. is because your cargo Tamil file is pulling some of its dependencies from your local branch and some of them from GitHub. Okay, um, maybe if I just like go to my project file and like commit that. Use transaction type. I don't know. Probably fix that later on. And then we can go back to our code and change this. It's pushed. Hmm. Wait, is that a problem? Is that a path? Yeah, it's a path. So it should pull and recompile. And we can also like take a look at other problems. New full start command on line 34 and remove this. What else? Update config, expected enum option found struct box. I'm not really sure what that means. Let's wait for this to compile so that we can get like up to date errors. Yeah, sounds good. 
Did we make it past the thing we were stuck on before, at least? It seems like it. It didn't fail, right? Yeah, now. yeah, we did. We did. We made it past it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, a lot of the problems were because we were mixing a local version with a, probably a different cargo.lock with, like, the one on Git, which had a completely different cargo.lock file as well. CPU usage is affecting quality. So, I mean, once we get everything running, we would use the Polkadot.js um, website to like test extrinsics and see if they get sealed. Yeah, right. So we did that successfully a couple weeks ago, I think, right? That's actually one of the things that I've been thinking about while we're debugging this is like, we, we had this working previously, right? So what all, I mean, we, we redid the code and we added this like, flag to choose whether it's manual seal or instant seal and we moved it to the recipes but not much else has changed right not much else has changed yeah it's just like substrate itself changed a lot uh, like a lot of the internal apis had to be reworked okay i see oh yeah right because like okay so so what what happened previously was like you had this branch of just a fork off of substrate and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, we, yeah. We modified the node template right in there. And so then to do this today, the idea was like, okay, take whatever little fixes you made to the actual consensus engine, make those a PR to substrate, and then we'll build the node instead of in the same repo, we'll build it in the recipes. And so I think what I'm understanding now that I didn't understand before is that like trivially making that PR to substrate of code that we wrote, you know, three weeks ago that wasn't so straightforward because it, you know, substrate changed out from underneath it in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, substrate changes like really, really fast. Because so. I was thinking, like, I was thinking, like, why are we still messing with the consensus engine? We had that part working before, but the reason is we had it working with a version of substrate that is <laughs> no longer exists, really. Yeah, you know? long gone. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I feel like, oof, so no more manual seal errors. Yay. Yay. Okay, we can we can work with this. We can work with this. So we need to add a flag. All right. Let's fix that first. CLI. Um here. Struck up long. Yeah. Isn't that what you want? Yeah, long. Okay. Service creates shaft three algorithm needs to go. What else? Service transaction pool expected arc from found reference. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, we could just clone. Literally, could just clone that or dereference it. Right. It's an arc anyway, right? So why not? Yeah, it's an arc. Yeah. Okay, we could just clone. We could just clone. Where is that? Transaction pool. Um. Oh. You know what? It doesn't matter. Clone. Ugh, that did not no, go that how did I planned it. Well at all. <laughs> <laughs> did not. That did not go how I planned it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, service transaction pool. Same thing. Where's that again? On line one zero three. That's no longer true. Future is not implemented for empty tuple. Opaque type expands to recursive type. That also makes no sense. Let's update that. For errors, we can do this. Future is not satisfied. Okay, so also terrible idea. Throwing um, semicolons everywhere. Oh, so why is service not, I mean. It resolves to itself. Yeah, that, that, that is new. That's, this is new for me. Opaque type expands to a recursive type. Why? So, it, uh, wait, where was it? Line 119 in service. Let's just look at that line. What's going on there? It just, it's a, 
return type results. The OK type is something that implements an abstract service. So what was actually on 119? 119. Isn't that the line number it told us that was the problem? Oh, ah, I see. Uh, so I guess we can't do this, is what it's saying. Like, you know what, just panic. That should just return. Well, unimplemented should also return a never type. So, yeah, I might. Like, let's see. Let's see. If and else have uh, different opaque types. Oh, wow. I mean, we could just use either here. Not, I'd not stress about it. Okay, let's okay. Slow down one second. Let me just try to understand this while we're going here. So, so uh, in the yeah, so it's telling you different if and else when it's yeah. used as like an expression. The if type needs to be the same as the else type. So yes. So um, you're trying to what type are you actually expecting here? I'm just like expecting a generic future type. Okay, got it. And then oh, so okay, so. The return type of manual seal is different from the return type of instant seal. Yeah. I, actually, they're just both async methods, if you can like see up there. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, opaque types are different. Well, Futures has this really cool um, utility for resolving this issue. OK, I see. Left. And right. So now this, they're they're both the same opaque type. Okay. Um, update config is I, I think the last issue we have. Wait no. Never type doesn't just work. The never type does not work. What do we do about this? I'm actually taking suggestions. Like I literally don't know what to do about this. The new light thing, so... Panic expands to the never type, but Rust says uh, we can't use that with an impl, like, trait uh, type. Maybe return a service error? 